Well, it's so good to have another Lord's Day with you, and the Lord has blessed us in so many ways. Um, we have some visitors um, joining us both on the live feed and at the building, and I just want to introduce ourselves uh, as we, we call ourselves the Brea Church of Christ, just because that's where we are, and the term Church of Christ taken from um, churches, how they're described in the Bible in Romans 16, verse 16, where Paul says to the Romans, the churches of Christ um, greet you, salute you. Um, and we're, uh, we're part of what we call restoration Christianity. It's all the idea of getting away from all these changes as best we can, all of these additions that men have have made into um, the church and Christianity and, and just getting back to the Bible and to try to worship God and serve God as a church just as they did. And so uh, we're very much into book, chapter, and verse. And so there's something that you see us do that seems maybe a little bit different. Um, there's a reason for it, and, and there's a, uh, we believe, a scriptural reason for that. And if you're curious about that, we're more than happy to uh, show you those scriptures and, and describe and explain to you um, why our approach to, to God and worship is that way. And let me just say I'm so glad to, to have you with us um, this morning, and we hope that you'll, you'll keep coming back and, and if you have some questions or curiosity, that's what we're all about. Open up God's Word and, and studying from it. Um, this morning, we're going to talk about um, beware of the leaven. Beware of the leaven. Jesus in Matthew 16 and in verse 6 warned His disciples, telling them, watch out. And beware of the leaven. We're going to talk about this warning where Jesus says, watch out and beware. We just sang 72 hilltops of glory, which in the third verse says these words, footsteps of Jesus before us lead. We tread life's journey, his warnings heed. Evil allurements cannot prevail. I'm on the upward trail. And so we're just saying about heeding the warnings of Jesus and not allowing evil allurements to prevail in our life. Leaven is often used in Scripture in a very negative context as a something that's evil, something that's an influence for bad. Jesus in Matthew 16, verse 6 said, Watch out and beware of the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees. He's saying, beware of their influence on you and what they do. You might remember when he began his ministry, he said, or, or at some point in his ministry, he said, They have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Therefore, do what they say, but do not do as they do. And as you go throughout the ministry of Jesus, you see Jesus warning people of all sorts of leaven, not just that of the scribes and the Pharisees. And so, I want to turn that into a discussion this morning of what we might call spiritual leavening. Not a good influence, but an a, a bad influence. I want to ask you, what in the year 2020, what do you think are the, 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 the influences, the dangers that we as Christians need to watch out for? You know, in the fire department, um, one of the, the trainings we do is we train for these big vegetation fires where vegetation or forest uh, uh, start on fire and, and they can get quite large, burning up hundreds of acres. Well, one of the first steps of training is they make you learn and memorize what they call 
the 18, 1 8 watch outs. 18 watch outs. And these are, are things that basically you learn to watch out for. Watch out for changing fire behavior. Watch out for changing weather. Watch out for this, watch out. And the unfortunate thing in these 18 watch outs is that each one came at the cost of a firefighter's life. You see, after almost every year, there's these huge fire, fire uh, these vegetation fires, these brush fires, and you hear of these firefighters dying. And at some point, the departments all look at what happened, they research it all, and a lot of times what we find is that they, they ignored some of these watch outs. They, they made mistakes. They put their own personal safety uh, in jeopardy. And what they do, what, what firemen do uh, is very dangerous. But I mean, there's a point where we're talking about burning brush. It will grow back. And to me, it's not worth risking your life and family, the loss of your family, um, for burning brush. And so each one of these was a lesson learned from someone that, that died. And it's unfortunate that lessons had to be learned that way. But it happens a lot. And, and I want you to take a take that and put it spiritually, there's a lot of times we learn to watch out for the spiritual leaven because Christians have died spiritually. Uh, Paul talks about Philetus and Hymenaeus to Timothy, and he says that they got involved in things they shouldn't have got involved, and they run, remember the, the, the phrase he uses, shipwrecked in their faith. So, what are we to watch out for? What are the dangers facing Christians, facing the church today? Well, what I want to do in this lesson is I, I want to um, just have a little discussion um, with some thoughts. I want you to think a little bit. Um, we're not going to talk a lot of scripture here at the beginning. I'm going to save the Bible verses towards the end. Okay? But I just want us to think and discuss a little bit because when we talk about what are the dangers uh, for Christianity, for the church today, there really is kind of a, 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 a division, a difference of opinion. And that difference comes about... Um, from really age. In other words, when you look at, there's a younger generation in the church. And I want to say, I am so glad we have young people in the Lord. And we have great young people. But a lot of times, the younger generation looks at the older generation. I'm going to call that older generation their parents. Maybe it could be the grandparents as well. And they, they kind of see the older generation as kind of, you know, very judgmental at some times. And, and they have this perception of, you know, why are my parents, sometimes they ask, why are my parents are so hard on mainstream evangelicals? And what is mainstream evangelicals? Well, this is kind of these big, huge churches. And there's a lot of things that these big, huge, mega churches believe and do that we just, we wouldn't agree with. And we can talk about those differences and study them, and I hope we would. But young people are like, I, I feel like my parents are just so hard on these things, on, on these evangelicals and, and kind of judgmental on them. And, and what I want to do is... Talk to the older generation first and foremost. And I want you to understand why our young people kind of have that mindset. Um, parents might be kind of worried. Why, why aren't you guys seeing, you know, some of the, 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 the departures here? Why aren't you concerned about this? And they might be a little worried of young people. 
Well, I want you to, to understand what these young people have to face in modern American culture. Okay, I want, I want to kind of paint a picture for you. We often hear the older generation talk about, in a positive way, the younger generation, and what they have to face in the world today, and you've heard it, things that we never had to face. Or things that we did have to be challenged by, but to a lesser degree. Things are much more um, rampant today. And so as you look at it, um, cursing. Young people have to deal with cursing today. He said, well, I had cursing in, in my day, yeah. But you compare it to like, if you grew up in the 1950s, um, young people were severely uh, rebuked for cursing. It was adult language. And even if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you compare some of these TV shows from the 80s and 90s to what's out there today, and there's a huge difference. And so we had to deal with it, but they on a larger scale. I, you hear a lot of times, you might be out in public, and you, you can hear teenagers uh, F-bomb this and F-bomb that. And our young people have to be around that and, and, and deal with that. Uh, fornication, teen pregnancies like never before. Uh, this, this mindset, our young people are just going to have fornication. You can't stop them. Well, that, that's kind of a ridiculous idea for generations. Young people were against that, taught against that. Uh, they, they have to deal with atheism like never seen before. Not just in college ranks, but even high school ranks. In elementary school. The teaching of evolution. And being told that their belief in God and creator is ridiculous. Drugs like never before. Alcohol, abortion. All of these things. Let me go back to that. And... This is what's out there in the world. This is what's out there on, on college campuses, high school campuses. And what? Well, <laughs> these mega churches have a, a lot of young people in these high schools along with our Christian kids. And what? <laughs> they have a lot of commonality. These evangelicals stand against these things. And so oftentimes they find commonalities, they find friendships with this, and, and there's good in these young people that come from the evangelical mega churches, and, and that's where they're coming from. They're not like these other kids that are involved in all this stuff. Why are you so hard on them? And I want the older generation to understand that, and I want them to respect that. You, you can respect that, can't you? You can understand that friendship, that commonality, that, that boost that they get, that they have kids that stand against a lot of these things, just like they want to do. Well, let's talk about the older generation as well. And I want to talk to the younger generation about the older generation now. The gen younger generation often sees their parents as judgmental and, and kind of hard sometimes and, and um, feels like maybe they just don't understand. Well, I think the older generation understands a lot more. It might be a different understanding than you have. But the older generation, what? Well, they kind of are the way that they are because they've seen things, young people, you haven't seen. And they've experienced things that you haven't experienced yet. They've seen what the church was and, and how conservative even society was and moral. And they've seen the departures from God's word in the church, in society, and, and that created kind of this evangelicalism. 
they've seen this idea that you can be saved without baptism, this, this faith only salvation, and yet they can see over and over baptism taught throughout the New Testament as a means of forgiveness, as a means of salvation. They've seen where, where the change has come, where now we have this entertainment-oriented worship. Uh, they have seen the departure where comedy is substitute for rather than preaching. Uh, they've seen where drama productions are, are brought about rather than good in-depth Bible classes. They've seen filling driven works overcome rather than scriptural based obedience. And so they've seen how these changes have come about. And that's why they say, watch out for these things. And that's why they're concerned about embracing that type of stuff. And I hope the younger generation will respect what they've been through and, and what their experiences are. And, and their very, very dedicated view to keep away from that type of leaven. You need to respect that. You need to honor that. And understand that there's a lot of reality to that. And, and so you have a difference in, in Christianity. You have the difference in the church uh, of what to watch out for. And so if I was to ask the younger generation, what, 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 are, what are you concerned about? What do we need to watch out for when it comes to... Um, this leaven that's out in the world. And, and I would say that the younger generation sees the need to watch out for what they say is the dying churches. The churches are dying. People are leaving them. And they say a concern for that. And so what, what do they see? Well, they see traditionalism as a very negative thing sometimes where we just kind of do the same thing over and over because, well, we've always done it that way, that mentality, or, or a lack of grace and mercy based on the older generation, some of that, that hard, tough skin that we talked about, or, or the older generation uh, uh, in the church having harsh judgments on others, or a lack of emotion. And so the young people say, yeah, those are the things that we need to watch out for. But let's talk about the older generation. You ask the same question, you're going to get a little different answer. The older generation says you need to watch out for the cultural church. What does that mean? Well, this is, a, this is that idea where, where religious people have latched on that the, the church evolves over time and culture now is embraced as that which determines what is right versus what is wrong, what is scriptural and godly versus what is not. So you need to be aware of that. That's all this excitement that's going on in these big churches because they say, well, we got to give men what they want. And so they're concerned about false doctrine. You know, a lot of these churches, you know, you look in Scripture and you see that there were different roles that God gave men and women. And, and women were not allowed in biblical times because of God's will to, to teach publicly over uh, large groups, including men. They weren't the preachers. They weren't the elders. But because culture has changed, now these churches have women that are preaching and teaching and taking leading roles over men. And that's not what God intended. And again, we can study that a little bit and show you scriptures on that. Uh, they say you need to watch out for liberalism, the idea of always changing. We need to change things and do it differently. Uh, institutionalism. Feel good Christianity. <clears throat> now Christianity feels good, but this is an idea that we only do those things that make us feel good. 
that we like. That's what we offer to God. And so as you look at this, you see that it's the same question, but different answers. The younger generation says, there's something else we need to watch out for. The older generation says, no, we need to watch out for that cultural church. So here's the question, who is right? And I'm going to answer that for you. Now, young people, maybe you're at home, maybe you're on your phone, maybe you're on a tablet. I want you to put all that down. I want you to listen. Because you're, you're going to hear a preacher say something you may not expect the preacher to say. Young generation, young people, you're right. Those are things that Christians need to watch out for. Now you can smile, you can point at your, your parents, you can high five one another. I don't know what you're doing, but you're right. And those concerns that you have, those are things that are spiritual leaven. Now, young people, I want you to keep, keep listening because I want to tell you the older generation, they're right also. Both groups are right. You see, the greatest danger is to think that there's only one set of dangers in the world. That there's only one set of problems that we, we have to be concerned about. No, both groups are right. These are dangers. These are leaven to the New Testament church that we're trying to, to replicate in the world today. So if that's the case, then why do sometimes we think that there's only one set of dangers or one spoonful of leaven that we have to be concerned about? And the answer to that is that we usually... Watch out for those dangers that we have seen or experienced. You see, the reason young people aren't more concerned about all of these departures and, and, and things, they just haven't experienced it. They don't know about institutionalism and, and they haven't seen their parents, how all the name calling and how they lost brothers and friends because they didn't embrace institutional uh, doctrine. And so, older generation, you have to understand, the younger generation isn't going to, to quite have the same feelings of those watchouts, of those dangers, because they just don't have that experience. And that makes sense. And we need to understand that, we need to respect that. But in the same way, young people, you need to respect that your parents are concerned about these dangers because they have had those experiences. And maybe they're not on the high school campus and to see that there is a commonality, that there are things that we share as far as concerns and morals and even in doctrine. And we need to understand that. So there's not just one set of dangers, but oftentimes those that we've experienced and, and have seen, those are the things that stand out to us. You see, the reality is it shouldn't be an either or situation. And yet sometimes, because we don't share the experiences, we don't share the perspective, we think what we consider to be dangers are more important than these dangers. And it shouldn't be that way. The older generation needs to understand that the younger generation has concerns for spiritualness, and we need to respect those and listen to them and address them. Now, I'm not saying that every perspective is correct, and if it's not, then we as parents need to teach our young, why is that not correct? And and, and lay it out for them. Uh, explain it to them. But if it is correct, and some of it is, we, we need to change that. And, and we need to admit that as an older generation. But in the same regards, young people need to do the same and have respect for the older generation, their parents. And what they see as the dangers. And there's a reason for it. 
It, it shouldn't be an either or situation, and it shouldn't be which is worse. You know, sometimes some of these things are justified because someone will say, well, what's worse? Clapping hands during worship or fornication? Right? Well, fornication is, is big sin, right? Clapping hands during worship or to applaud something in worship. That doesn't seem that bad when you can sit, compare it to fornication. But again, when you look at it that way, it's not healthy. It's not a godly way to look at it. Yeah, fornication is, is against God's will. But has God given us the response that when we approve of something or, 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 or want to show favor in something in worship, the expression of clapping hands? That's not what he's given us. That, that's from the world. A world that continues to add entertainment to religion. And what do we do in entertainment? So much of it is when we like something, we clap. And we've brought that, I believe, into our religion. It's not an either or situation. It's not a which one is worse. And so since this isn't as bad as that, this becomes okay. But that's the little mind tricks that we play sometimes. Both generations may emphasize different leaven, but both are correct. And so what I want to end the lesson with is look at some passages that teach both perspectives. I want to look at some passages that show both generations are right. The Bible says, watch out for both. Let's start in Malachi. We're going to look at several passages in Malachi because it, it just fits so well with what we're talking about. I'm going to start in Malachi chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. It's the last book of the Old Testament. If you want to go to Matthew and turn left, that's a good way to find it as well. So in Matthew, Malachi chapter 1, 13 and 14, God is speaking through Malachi to his people. And he is not pleased with them. So I want you to notice what he says in verse 13. You also say, my, how tiresome it is. He's talking about worship. And you disdainfully sniff at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring what was taken by robbery and what is lame or sick. So you bring the offering. Should I receive that from your hand, says the Lord? In verse 14, but cursed be the swindler who has a male in his flock and vows it, but sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is feared among the nations. Young people are right. That if our worship is just become something by rote, that we're just showing up and we're going through the steps. They're right. That's not acceptable worship. God wants our heart and our emotion to be involved. Now that doesn't mean we have to roll in the aisles and, and wave our hands back and forth and get all excited that way. But inside, there needs to be emotion. There's times, probably you're like me, that I've teared up during the Lord's Supper. When you really think about what Jesus did for you and what it took. But you know what? If you're offering to God leftovers, older generation, younger generation, that's not right. Younger generation sometimes says, man, worship is so boring. And I look at these other churches and they're doing such exciting things. They got movies instead of sermons. They got popcorn instead of the Lord's Supper. Boy, that's fun. Well, I want to tell you that that is not what God has commanded us to do. That's not the approach that God has given to us. 
And maybe that's why we find it boring. We don't understand how to get excited about God. When we're pleasing our Father, when we're doing the things that Jesus died on the cross for, so that those things can be done and have meaning, I'm going to be excited. Because those are the things that excite God, that please God. He talks about in this passage the man that vows the best of his flock but then gives the leftovers, gives the worst of his flock. And I want to tell you, we can be guilty of that older generation, younger generation. Sometimes the older generation is giving God leftovers and young people can see that. When there is not much spirit or joy in our singing, they can tell that. But young people, when you're staying up all hours of the night, Saturday night, you come to worship and you can barely stay awake. Because of Saturday night, that's giving God leftovers. Let's take a look at Malachi chapter 2, verse 2. Malachi 2, very next chapter, verse 2. God says, if you do not listen, if you do not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. And indeed, I have cursed them already because you are not taking it to heart. Again, young people are right. If we're offering to God something that our heart's not involved in, that's not right. We need to watch out for that. That younger generation is absolutely right about that. Let's take a look at Malachi chapter 2. Now jump down to verse 7 and 8. Where in verse 7 and 8 he says, For the lips of a priest should preserve knowledge, and men should seek instruction from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But as for you, you have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by the instruction. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. You can see I'm emphasizing here that men want that serve God seek instruction. I, I did a sermon uh, 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 a number of months ago called Intellectual Curiosity. There has to be, there should be intellectual curiosity among Christians. I want to know what this book says. I want to know properly what it means to me. But sometimes the younger generation sees all the exciting things, all the fun things going on. But the preaching is all centered on just a bunch of stuff. And, and, and emphasizing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in our teaching, yes, that's good. But there's more to preaching the gospel than just that. Christians need to seek to get deeper into the Word of God and deeper knowledge. Because if you don't do that, that's when you turn aside from the way. And so younger gener the older generation is right. The Bible says you need to seek the right instruction. Unless you turn away. Or turn aside from the way. Let's take a look at Malachi chapter 2 verse 9. So also, so I also have made you despise and abase before all the people, just as you are not keeping my ways, but are showing partiality in the instruction. Don't you hate if you ever had a boss like this, maybe you have a boss like this, who favors certain employees over others, and you're probably not one of the favored ones? Well, that's what he's saying. You, you, you talk, you teach someone and command someone over here to do this, but this group you don't. That, that is Pharisees. Pharisees, what? They told all the people to lift heavy loads, but they wouldn't lift one finger themselves. So young, younger generation, your, your parents are right to be concerned about what is being taught and how it's being taught. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 2 and 3. These are the words of Jesus. 
He says, For in the way you judge, you will not be judged. Or excuse me. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Verse 3. And why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Older generation, the younger generation is right. Jesus himself said, watch out for the way that you judge. Now, younger generation, if you're caught up in this idea, oh, you can't judge me. That's not what Jesus is saying. Just keep reading. We have to make judgments. We have to make judgments. This is sinful. This is righteous. I'm not going to do this because that's not what a child of God does. That, that wouldn't be pleasing to my father. That would be destructive. But what he is saying here is don't make judgments based on your own standard. Absent of God's standard. And I would imagine a lot of times the way young people see it, and I would imagine a lot of times the way they see it is correct, that we use a judgment of God and then we get even harder in our judgments. We add to that. So older gener uh, generation, I want you to know the younger generation is right when they, they say, watch out for being harsh and merciless. In fact, let's go over to James chapter 2, 13, where James, by inspiration, writes these words. For judgment, look at this. For judgment will be merciless to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. The younger generation has a good point to make, older generation. And I don't know if you notice, I'm putting myself in older generation. There is such thing in the Bible as righteous indignation. We don't have to be excited about all the morality that's going on in the world. We can be disgusted by it, but never should we be to so ind indignant, that's the word, that we stop having love and care for the souls of others. That we stop teaching them and trying to invite them to come and to share the gospel with them. We should never have a mentality of you're going to get what you deserve. And I think sometimes young people could be correct the way we make judgments. If it's not, if that's not a correct percent, let's talk to them about it. And let's point that out and teach them why that's not a correct, it's not what we're doing. But sometimes we have to admit, we do make harsher judgments than maybe God would. Matthew 15, verse 3. Jesus said, and he answered and said to them, And why do you yourselves transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? Now, this is a context where they asked Jesus about a tradition, which the text says is a tradition of the elders. It was a tradition that man made. It was a tradition that man bound on others as if it was from God, but it wasn't from God. And Jesus says, why are you disobeying God for the sake of your tradition? Right? It's, it's almost like, what's just worse, right? Well, I can go ahead and do this because it's not as bad as this. You know, young generation, your parents are right to be concerned about all these things that men are making up. No matter how exciting they are. If they're a transgression of what God commands of us, it's nothing to be excited about. In Galatians 1, verse 8 and 9, But even though we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. And if he didn't hear it the first time, 
he says a second time, as we have said before, verse 9, so I, again, I say again now, if any man is preaching you a gospel contrary to that which he, you received, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed is not pleasant words. But younger generation, your parents are right. There's a lot of teaching that is contrary to the gospel. It's cultural. It's not biblical. And so, what are we to watch out for? Well, I, I hope that we have a, a good understanding after this lesson, if we didn't before. Our young people have a lot to offer to us. And maybe they don't see the same things that we do as an older generation. There's a reason for that. And we need to be careful of how hard we are on them. But young people as well know that your parents have these concerns and it's for a reason. It's leaven. And I think if we can begin a discussion from that basis, that these are both dangers, and that we have to look at ourselves just as we have to look at others and what they're doing, I think if we can approach that, we're going to make a lot of contact with each generation. So we are to watch out for just rigid, harsh, merciless judgments. Worship that just is kind of going through the motions. But we also need to be concerned that we're not getting all excited about this is new and this is exciting when it's not according to God's will. We invite you to get back to the Word of God. The New Testament Christianity and if we can help you see those passages, if we can guide you on the way, we'd love to do that if you let us know. At this point, we're going to be closing our service. We're so glad that you have joined us. Uh, we're hoping that we can get back to gather the whole family uh, very soon. But until that happens, we hope that you are, are staying spiritually healthy, spiritually excited, and that you're living that Christian life. Um, think about your brethren. Check on them. Call them. Text them. Even though you may not be seeing them. Uh, keep them in your prayers. And so we'll be dismissed with a word of prayer for, by Brother Dale. And we'll look forward to being with you again next Sunday. Thank you.